This year's theme for Earth Day is protect our species. Rising temperatures and weather fluctuations are putting millions of species at risk of extinction, while others are being forced to migrate to other habitats. Last October, the CBSN Originals team investigated invasive species. They are non-native organisms which enter an ecosystem and cause harm. Here's a clip from the documentary Burmese Python Invasion, Fighting Invasive Species. Python, right there, right there. Right there. All right, we got him, we got him. Python, finally! This guy is probably only about two years old. Two years old and he's this big. Yeah, so there's really not that much that's gonna eat him. There's no birds. Um, no raccoons, nothing, uh, nothing to, to predate on him except uh, alligators at this stage. Two years old. The strength of this is incredible. Another year and he'll be able to breed and, you know, when they get to be 18 feet, they can have over 100 eggs in them. You think the Burmese python can be stopped? Stopped from progressing north? I hope so. That's what we're trying to do. As their food supply in the Everglades dwindles, these snakes are on the move. And experts say climate change is further expanding the python's habitat. <laughs> Great. So on to the next one. Only two years old and already such a big snake there. CBSN Originals supervising producer Matt Morrison is here with me on set. Matt, welcome. What a fascinating Thanks. documentary. Of course, the python is not native to the Florida Everglades, correct? Nope. <laughs> Which is why it's an invasive species. What kinds of problems is the python creating? Are other invasive species creating? Sure. Well, the python in the Everglades, um, it, it is native to Southeast Asia. so. It doesn't have the kind of predators in the Everglades that it has in Southeast Asia. And so it's able to kind of run rampant there. Um, they grow pretty quickly. And once they grow to even uh, adolescent size, uh, like the one Adam uh, was had coiled around his yeah. arm in that dock, um, they can decimate a species there. In the Everglades specifically, since it was introduced a couple decades ago, 99% uh, of Rabbits, fox, possum, raccoons uh, have been wiped out completely. But because of the Burmese python. Specifically because of the Burmese python. It has no natural predator, as, mm -hmm. as she pointed out, other than the alligator. And that's not, do, that's not enough. Right. And once they reach full size, which can be up to 200 pounds, uh, around 20 feet long, there, even an alligator is going to have a very tough time with the Burmese python. So this is scary stuff. It's it's clearly a problem. It's not just the Burmese python. Where mm -hmm. else in the world are we seeing invasive species cause problems in non-native ecosystems? I mean, it's really, it, it's a global problem, honestly. Uh, since 1500, it's estimated that up to one-third of all species in the world that have gone extinct have been due to invasive species. Um, so invas invasive species are not just animals, they're plants as well. Right. Um, kudzu was, is a famous plant that has been sort of decimating the south that was brought in uh, to as, as basically decoration for porches and things like that, and it's really taken over. So you point out it was brought in as decoration mm -hmm. for porches. So people, we had a hand in this. Absolutely. With the python, people buy them as pets. They mm -hmm. get a little too big and scary, and they just release them into the wild. Yep. So how much of this problem is being caused by people, and how much of it is being caused by climate change? Climate change really exacerbates the problem. So in the case of the Burmese python, for instance, as climates get warmer, as flooding increases, Increases and things like that as, as wet, warm climate or, or area in the United States increases, then the Burmese python's territory gets larger. Right. Um, but they and, got there in the first place because mm -hmm. of humans just releasing them into the wild. Yes, and in some cases, uh, people bring in these species for for the ben for the benefit of um, of 
the economy or what have you, Asian carp in the Mississippi River Basin, for instance, mm -hmm. was brought in to help with catfish ponds and, and catfish farms. Floodwaters actually put that, uh, displaced it into natural waterways and where it just completely took over. So what else can be done? I mean, here we see that pretty tough uh, python hunter there and she found a little python. Other than people going out and literally trying to mm -hmm. find these invasive species and what, what do they do? They collect them and give them to the what do they do with them when they collect these invasive species? Well, they often they terminate they them. Terminate them oh, okay, uh, all right. Often, <laughs> and they and they've tried to put a ban. For instance, in the case of the Burmese python, uh, Florida has banned the import of that right. snake. Right. If you have one, uh, if you if you acquired it before July first, two thousand ten, mm -hmm. you are allowed to keep it. It's sort of grandfathered in. They okay. do live almost you know twenty, in some cases twenty five years. So that's not that comforting, but um, but yes, they try to ban them, they try to eradicate them. The reality though is with invasive species that once they work their way into an ecosystem, it is almost impossible to get them out. So, um, you know, one or two them. python hunters or invasive species hunters mm -hmm. are really not gonna move the needle. No, Flor I mean, Florida has about two dozen as part of their contractor program, which Donna Khalil is part of. Mm -hmm. um, they have also kind of put open season on Burmese pythons. So if one makes its way into your backyard, if you're brave enough, you can go ahead and take it out. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and, and you know, there's a, there's a big movement actually in the case of the lionfish and in the Asian carp to make it part of, to create a market for it. And, yeah. and make it so that you can sell it in, in grocery stores and things like that. Burmese python, that's not gonna work. Uh, they're very high in mercury, yeah. so you can, you can eat them a little bit. Adam actually does in the dock, so I, you know, I, I encourage people to check that out. It's a fun scene, but. A bite uh, is okay, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, but. But so other than that, other than, you know, a few places having invasive species hunters and, and allowing people to sort of you know, become hunters on their own, if you will. Do you think that there needs to be more education? People need to be more aware of the problem so that they don't become a part of the problem? Yeah, I, th I think that's true. And I, I think by and large, the the idea that, oh, if I'm, I'm just one person and I have this one exotic animal or whatever and I can't take care of it anymore, or I'm moving or whatever the case may be, and you just decide I'm gonna let it loose, what's one animal gonna do? Probably another animal will get it uh, in short order. That's not, uh, a responsible thing to do, particularly with uh, species, again, that are not native to the area. Um, you know, get in touch with the local zoo or whatever, right. and they probably will have some, some good thoughts for you. But in general... There's a better solution than yes. releasing it to the <laughs> don't, intro don't introduce it into it. We don't system. need any more. How many do you roughly know how many invasive species there are now in the U.S.? I mean, there must be uh, thousands. Hundreds. Thousands. I mean, well, because well. it's because it's anything from an animal to a plant to right. organisms like fungi and things like that. Right. So anything that can uh, that's non-native to an ecosystem and can do harm. Um, economic harm, ecological harm, harm to human health um, is the way that uh, agriculture depends. Uh, Scary stuff, and thank you for shedding light on it. My spreading pleasure. Spreading the word. Happy Thanks Earth so much, Day. Matt. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Happy Earth Day to you, too. And you can watch the full CBSN Originals Burmese Python Invasion on CBSNews.com.